bronchial asthma is a very well controllable entity hello and welcome to doctor story everyone today we are going to discuss about bronchial asthma what we commonly call as asthma or asthma you landed to this video maybe because you are an asthma patient maybe someone you know is or just for the information whatever may be the reason we will try our best to clarify all you need to know about this medical condition our expert doctor for today is dr matthew vargis mbbs md pulmonology dnb pulmonology and european diplomat in adult respiratory medicine with more than 4 years of practice post mb and well in, well experience in bronchoscopy and thoracoscopy dr matthew on behalf of the whole team i welcome you to talk to story thank you so doctor please help us understand firstly what is bronchial asthma bronchial asthma is a lung condition it's a lung disease yeah uh, it's a chronic that means it's a long term airway airway inflammatory disease hmm um uh, uh, it's a reversible condition hmm mainly the uh, issues are happen um in the uh, night time or in the early morning okay and and why does it happen can you list down a possible cause of the usual onset that happens now yeah. this happens uh, to uh, allergic people usually see so before uh, before describing uh, how this happens i have to tell the different uh, sub types of people who are having this asthma so it is usually known as the phenotypes the phenotypes of bronchial asthma it could be atopic or allergic that is first mm-hmm. phenotype so in these people usually the symptoms starts from the childhood itself so that is usually before the 12 years of age itself the symptoms they will start hmm? and there will be a strong family history also like the patient's father mother brother uh, sister or anyone will be having maybe there's a chance that they also can have these symptoms and there can be associated allergic uh, rhinitis or eczema like allergic rhinitis is a condition that the patient whenever uh, the person is exposed to dust or whether uh, winter condition or cold climate they are having sneezing or running out huh? so in this condition that is the allergic type of bronchial asthma these patients can have associated these symptoms or eczema eczema is a skin condition associated with itching of the skin so this can also be associated with in this sub type of bronchial asthma and these people can have food allergy like especially this uh, seafoods like a crab prawn like that or some other uh, common food items also they can be allergic to and sometimes they are allergic to some drugs also so usually when we uh, examine their sputum hmm, in that eosinophil count will be a very small the uh, luckiest thing in this type of asthma they are very Uh, likely to respond to inhalers mm. the second type is non allergic type that is uh, it is uh, non atopic type there is another type mm. in this case they it is not associated with allergy so it can be this sputum if we examine it can be other neutrophilic or eosinophilic uh, and uh, the problem is uh, these people uh, they are not uh, that responsive to the inhaler therapy mm. another one type is there that is adult onset or late onset asthma what is that uh, the onset of asthma the symptoms will be after the 12 years of age till 12 years old usually they may not be having any symptoms this starts after 12 years of age uh, they are tend to be this type of people are also tend to be non allergic and they they so what happens these people this kind of people require more inhaled corticosteroid to control this hmm? usually in this type of condition we have to rule out occupational asthma that's another very typical variant because uh, occupational asthma is a type of asthma where the patient develop the symptoms only after starting their occupation after starting they are joining a new job then they started the symptoms so when they go for the job on that day they will be having the symptoms so mainly the symptoms will be in the 
working hours or after that like monday to friday they will be having the seniors then when they are taking uh, leave like sunday or uh, saturday or when they take a long leave at that time they may not be having any seniors then again when they close for the job they start seniors so sometimes it is very confusing to uh, differentiate between whether it is an adult on the asthma or whether it is an occupational asthma then when the other types of asthma are there there are, that is which is associated with obesity because we may not be find any other reason why they have developed this this asthma ultimately we will find that they have put on a lot of weight recently mm-hmm. that can be the reason for the asthma as uh, so usually if the person is having any endocrine abnormality or thyroid issues or diabetes issues or uh, like they have recently changed the food habits and they have put on weight at that time it will, it will appear and for them we will advise to reduce the weight that is another type of bronchial asthma some time uh, some other type is there it is associated with the aspirin aspirin exacerbation like these people may not be having any other uh, asthma symptoms but after taking the painkiller for some other issues they can we can notice a uh, exacerbation of symptoms so that can be aspirin or painkiller associated so in this condition they, they, there is uh, a chance that many patients can have nasal polyp also so they can have uh, associated allergic issues or some in them esophageal count will be very high like that these are the very very type as you ask uh, so in a after seeing a asthma patient ideally we have to classify and see <coughs> in which type this person belongs to difference between allergy and asthma that ah uh, see allergy is hyper responsiveness of our body to some uh, antigens mm-hmm. or some outside proteins hmm? so it's a umbrella under this umbrella comes the asthma asthma is entirely different from allergy allergy means the, the our body uh, is hyper responsive to uh, some outside things mm. uh, it, so the allergy reaction can be see the when the allergy is exposed uh, exposed your uh, our nasal mucosa we can sneeze mm. or uh runny nose will be there when it's exposed to our skin we can have itching it is exposed to our eyes we can have itching of the eyes or watering of the eyes when it's exposed to our lungs definitely we'll be having bronco constriction that is airway will get constricted and we will be having this chest tightness cough wheezing all these symptoms so asthma is entirely uh, it is rest- limited to the lungs allergy means all of this so uh, asthma is a part of this allergy So both are different. Mm. Okay. So as you mentioned the different types of asthma, what sort of people are at more risk? One, we have to see the genetic predisposition factor is definitely there. If mother or father is allergic uh, or a sister, like uh, any family members are uh, having any allergy issues, definitely there is a chance that uh, this person is more likely to develop uh, mm-hmm. asthma. That is one risk factor. Others are like see obesity is definitely a risk factor mm-hmm. obesity is always an inflammatory condition also so definitely what happen this is an inflammatory condition asthma is also an inflammatory condition so definitely that is a risk factor other thing is gerd gerd is gastroesophageal reflux disease that is an aggravating factor for uh, this uh, asthma like if a person is having recurrent burping uh, gastroesophageal reflux or gastritis what happens this acid will get reflux so it can go to the bronchial mucus and irritate and the asthma can get worse so that's why some people they especially say after having uh, spicy food uh, uh, or after uh, lying down the uh, bed after having meals i have this is there is an exacerbation of the symptoms that means these people so smoking is another risk factor a both type of smoking like uh, need not to be active smoking and even spark passive smoking is like if the uh, wife is having allergy symptoms uh, mm. she is an asthmatic patient and this husband is uh, smoking near sitting near to her so definitely this even the passive smoking can worsen the symptoms another thing is uh, exhaust fumes and all these things when we in a non case of bronchial asthma uh, this person is uh, regularly uh, Going to the office by by so what he is regularly getting exposed to the these uh, smoke and uh, all these things uh, in, uh, in the road now so that is another risk factor 
then uh, exposure to dust uh, then sometimes irritable smells some la- ladies are saying after cooking uh, when i was using the mustard mm. i'm having this issue some people are having issues with the perfumes a particular type of perfume after using that i'm having some people they exacerbate a uh, factor maybe uh, changing weather like uh we don't to be winter or this mostly mm-hmm. it is seen in winter or cold climate or when we are going to some cold places like you uh, need or himachal uh, pradesh some people are going for the vacation at that time it mm-hmm. can be there even some uh, sometimes from the winter it is changing to uh, summer time at that time also it can be so change in weather is another thing then uh, in it profession salary we are seeing when they are working for long hours in under ac or they are going for a long journey in ac car they can develop this symptoms uh, then another one to be addressed is uh, pet dander that is uh, the uh, many people are having this pets like cat dog and uh, at that time what happens is uh, what happens is uh, this uh, the hair of these pets the dander in, in the hair of these pets this can also worsen the asthma symptoms then some people are having uh, exercise the induced asthma like they are having no any symptoms now but once they are going for a jogging after the jogging or after coming from the gym they will be having a exercise so exercise induced uh, asthma is there uh, and uh, obviously some people after having emotional outbreak even after laughter or uh, crying a lot or some emotional mm-hmm. imbalance at that time they can have um, so many it's a multifactorial many things for each person it can be different so the body has to find out what exactly is the structure for that person exactly there are so many uh, triggers to it you can't actually you know classify it into this specific to each its own i think yes yes yes, yes. That. that's why even yes yes that's why when an asthma case comes to opd we have to take a proper history like uh, from the childhood how many times the person gets the exacerbation um then uh, any drug history is there because when a person is already on some bp medications mm-hmm. like some beta blockers at that time also there can be uh, asthma so some beta blocker such a group of medicine if it is there in uh in the for hypertension cutone usually many types of medicines are there one of that is beta blocker when a person is on beta blocker um it can uh, constrict the airway so what narrow the airway in patients who have risk to develop asthma so that also we have to address so it's multifactorial we have to take a proper history we have to evaluate properly and see all these so as you explain the triggers uh, what is an asthma attack like now if you could you know verbalize a person experiencing an attack patient have breathing difficulty second is a patient can have cough it can be productive or not but usually dry cough after some days it can turn to be uh, with sputum the fourth is chest tightness so patient may not be having cough or breathless but the only feeling some days maybe is the tightness of the chest mm. if for one is wheezing uh, wheezing is uh, the how to explain like a sound like mm. like that so all these things are the same this so um, usually uh, a person who have got previously the attack of bronchial asthma will be knowing when she or he gets an attack because that starts with a chest tightness and uh, uh, the person will uh, having a breathing difficulty sometimes they cough uh, and he will go to these then they may be knowing this is an asthma attack Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, uh, sometimes very rarely saturation drops uh, not all of us and what would be the like normal duration of this attack ah uh, duration depends uh, upon it varies from person to person like uh, see, uh, when this uh, happens if a per- for a person if this happens for the first time okay maybe because uh, he has exposed to some allergies or some uh, activity factors so otherwise if a non case of bronchial asthma inhales for such a person how when it uh, causes if you miss the inhaler mm. usually we will be catering the inhaler dose and we will be telling you have to take two puffs in the morning and two puffs in the evening and for two three days the person is not taking 
like uh, he has gone to some place and he forgot to take the uh, medicine or he has forgot at that time he develops so uh, the uh, how long it will vary means it depends upon the severity if it is a mild attack maybe after some time it can reverse by its own and the, the reliever medication if the person takes by himself it will develop but if it is serious one is a severe one definitely it can worsen and the person's saturation can drop down and uh, yeah. it can uh, uh, result in some serious issues so that is immediately they have to uh, the mutual hospital and get a medical care so after one has you know acknowledge that okay this is the allergen through which i get the asthma attack how can we possibly prevent such attacks it's again related to the uh, you know prevention of not going to that allergen being as a precautionary measure see first we have to find out whether it is asthma or not there are many things that can present as an asthma so without confirming it we, we should never document it as an asthma see all these symptoms can happen in some other conditions like one is COPD COPD is a uh, like it's a chronic bronchitis and emphysema or together mm-hmm. such a disease usually seen in uh, smokers long term smokers mm-hmm. and people who got exposed to biomass like our mm-hmm. uh, women in indian women usually uh, especially in all all time they were we using this biomass now this uh, wood and all for cooking so they are getting exposed to smoke for long time and the, this kind of people can go into copd so the management is copd is entirely different so uh, we have to differentiate whether it is an asthma or copd second condition is bronchitis after recurrent infection a person can develop a bronchitis so that can also present like asthma third thing is heart failure acute pulmonary edema like an acute cardiac failure so if a person is having hypertension but they are not taking medicines after some months what happens they get they get such as that person can develop an acute pulmonary edema at that time what happens at that time it can present with all these symptoms so we may think that is a bronchial asthma sometimes central tumors in the lung like a carcinoid at that time also the same symptoms and signs will be there we may think that is a bronchial asthma but may not be that can be a central carcinoid tumor of the lung sometimes foreign body aspiration like they are having some food at the some chicken piece or a, a little board chicken bone or something fish bone something i have aspirated like that i ha- am having all these bees or this illness hmm. some rare conditions like church row syndrome abpa or allergy bronchopulmonary aspergillosis or eosinophilic pneumonia all all these conditions can be with asthma so first we have to find out whether it is asthma or not that is the first job Mm-hmm. when a person comes with this uh, cough breathlessness wheezing or chest tightness we should never document like uh, this person is having asthma first mm-hmm. we have to diagnose whether it is asthma or not we have to be very sure because all these other conditions we have to be more cautious so we have mm-hmm. to rule out all these conditions before documenting it is it has asthma how we can document first we will do a chest x ray first we usually we will examine the case on uh, no, auscultation using this that we uh, then we will know if there is bilateral polyphonic expiratory wrong is there bilateral this is more likely to be a bronchial asthma <laughs> otherwise then we have to go for a chest x ray why because we have to rule out any other condition is there or still it is bronchial asthma because in bronchial asthma x ray will be usually it is it will be normal but in this in some condition if it is not normal then then that is not bronchial asthma something else is there some disappeared bronchitis can present like this mm. then you have to go for a spirometry or lung function test pulmonary function test pft that is the gold standard uh, investigation of choice after doing a pulmonary function test with the reversibility then we will come to know if there is a reversibility of 200 ml of air and 12 percent then we can run the disappeared bronchial asthma test then what we have to do Mm-hmm. we have to do a blood test uh, aec that is absolute eosinophil count and a ige immunoglobulin e we have to look for these counts because uh, in allergic conditions immunoglobulin e will be very high that is atopic type of asthma if it is so then we have to go for a skin prick test to find out which type of 
allergen is possible so some for some people it may be um for some pollen grains some people it may be seafood um uh, like uh, some people it may be pet dander so after that skin filter test it is uh, we will get an idea okay these can be the possible things that are triggered so first we have to find out uh, what is causing which type of asthma and all these things and to rule out other things that can simulate or mimic this asthma then only we can say okay this is bronchiolitis then only we can start uh, the proper treatment but when a person comes with an exacerbation definitely we have to give uh, steroid injection at the enable session and we have to make the patient stable but we have to evaluate further and find out what exactly causing all this thank you for laying down the diagnostic method uh, coming to the treatment now whatever normal prescriptions we give and you know things we ask the patients to do or not to do ah uh, see uh, not to do is not first after finding out the exacerbating factors of the clinical history of the uh, skin filters and all the things we will tell them not to go to these things like if the person is uh, having this allergy to this this uh, house this might and all then we will tell you you should clean uh, you will keep the room will be neat always and some people are having spider web allergy then we will tell them uh, don't allow uh, to be all these things in the room then uh, that is one thing so the exacerbated thing that is we will tell them to avoid like if the person is having gerd gr there is a reflex and uh, that is the reason behind this then we will tell them uh, lifestyle modification like uh, take a little uh reduce the uh, spicy food uh, don't sleep after just uh, uh, after uh, having food at least a two hour gap you should maintain then we may prescribe the plant acid like that uh, that is not to do this. so doctor some some people also complain that their asthma worsens whenever they take medications what could be the reasons behind or uh, is it normal or does this indicate something worse the thing is that uh, the diagnosis may be wrong in that condition see if it is a bronchial asthma that is a confirmed with us definitely with the inhalers proper inhalers a uh, hundred types of inhalers are available in the market so depending upon the condition we have to give which type of inhaler we have to uh, take a decision to so if it is a bronchial asthma and if the person uh, is uh, has been started on in cases and it's against they telling uh, i am not getting a brew uh, i am not uh, my symptoms are not getting a brew means then definitely the technique of taking inhaler may be wrong one thing second thing are uh, the diagnosis may be wrong because uh, that could be an a pulmonary case or some heart failure case or some other case we have wrongly diagnosed as asthma so if it is a wrong asthma case then definitely with the antihistamines and uh this bronchodilator therapy especially with the injected corticosteroid that should develop if it is not getting developed uh, getting improved means definitely we have to and if it is proplasma only uh, mm. if the diagnosis is correct and if the person is not improving then definitely we have to search for the other things uh, is there any other uh, there is something called difficult to treat asthma that is a subject of asthma asthma that is uh, that the asthma case confirms asthma case and uh, we have started the uh, treatment uh, but Uh, it is not getting to the end. Uh, then we have to find out there can be some uh, uh, other factors play, like obesity, hypothyroidism, uh, then uh, these uh, uh, lifestyle modifications like the GRD, then any concurrent medicines that can worsen the uh, lung, like uh, beta blockers. So we have to find out, and we have to remove all these. So, doctor, now that you have talked about uh, inhalers, could you also shed some light on the usage of inhalers and what should one not do with an inhaler? See, uh, for a bronchial asthma case, the best to drug is to use the inhaler. Inhalers are the uh, uh, treatment of these are the uh, treatment of choice for the uh, bronchial asthma. Now, uh, inhalers make various types of inhalers are available in the market. The, uh, the, for each patient uh, the fitting type of inhaler may be different like uh, mdis are there so usually people will tell like puff that's mdi mm-hmm. sometimes dpas are there uh, dpas are i mean you can see some tablet you are putting in the machine and it take with a uh, so usually if you are taking mdi better to use with a spacer so you will be getting proper um, 
coordination that is what you can using with the using a dpa use with the rotor healer or loopy healer you can uh, use with the healer some other types are like uh, um, uh, synchro bridge is there uh, that is breath extension kit you have to you don't have to press it you just keep it in mouth and take then um, another type is like a uh, turbo healers are there like this proper turbo healer so different types are there after you see what you have to do note to do is like uh, see usually the physician will train how to use the debate uh, to use so in that way we need to use that's it to, and to do thing is after using the inhaler you should wash your mouth rinse your mouth that is the main thing because otherwise especially in a case of immune suppressed case like old age or people who are on the long or long term steroids or the people or people after kidney transplant or heart transplant like that in such cases what happens after if they are not rinsing their mouth after uh, taking this inhaler there's a chance that they can develop um, candidiasis or fungal infection in the mouth only if they are not uh, washing their mouth out that's all all right and we, if we talk about the covid condition prevailing it does asthma increases the chance of covid it's not true and yet uh, asthma as it is not a uh, risk factor for covid but obviously just like in what we see in general in general population in asthma patients also covid can come that uh, but uh, asthma uh, per se is not a uh, great risk factor for uh, covid so they don't have to worry about that and they can be vaccinated also like a normal it doesn't relate sure to sure sure definitely definitely as a person has to be vaccinated no they whether they can be they have to be vaccinated no doubt and during even if a bronchial asthma patient got covid positive they have to continue to take the vaccine that is another thing when it is a bronchial asthma person who is already on inhaler got covid positive they should not stop it they have to are there any uh, natural remedies or techniques also which actually work for the betterment like you know mostly we have heard of uses of uh, garlic ginger or honey combination playing the role is it true or is it just a myth no, honey can they know among these things what you are told uh, the only thing i support is honey honey can uh, suit on the throat so sometimes the cough can uh, reduce uh, cough can be reduced by this honey otherwise this ginger uh, i am not think it can help pepper definitely in some people we have seen after taking this pepper and all it can worsen oh that's what oh. we are saying uh, honey can reduce mad cough part and if we talk about the lifestyle changes that are needed what are the changes that a patient is asked to bring post the diagnosis with asthma uh like uh, what i told after finding out the exacerbating exa- factors they have to get rid of all these things that's one thing then if it is a uh, gerd that is gerd is the uh, exacerbating factor then they have to stop taking this spicy food tea coffee and all these things and they should not lie down to uh, go go to the bed uh, uh, with hours of having the meals and all these things they should not go into these places and uh, they have to keep our surroundings very clean um, they should not put on much weight uh, they have to take properly the inhalers as doctor is such a detailed guidance uh, from you thank you so much for joining and we truly appreciate the time you took up for all of us thanks a lot for inviting me